Steve and I are just going to go for a mad, um, a mad bender. I think Steve's in That's there. why I invited you round here. I wanted to see a mad bender. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for turning up, Paul. It's alive! <laughs> Prehistoric bitch, how we do things downtown. Welcome to Empire of Geek, and on this week's show, we've got a reduced uh, number of people. Uh, Raoul's just been telling us about triangulating coordinates for people's mothers. Oh, Jesus. Uh, on this week's show, we've we've got a reduced number because the other people haven't bloody turned up yet. We're so, here. Well, you're here. Yes, the main That's people right. are here. We've got Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello. You had a good week. Someone's tried ripping you off. Yeah. Cyber crime. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the first time it's ever happened to me. Yeah, I feel violated. Yeah, yeah I do. It feels like someone's like someone breaking into your Not in the way that you normally you'd be violated, where you pay for it, either. This has been unwanted. <laughs> no, this is Look, an unwanted those violation. Those aristocratic sex parties that you go to. <laughs> I'd love to talk about that on, the, on tape. In which someone's dressed as the Queen Mother with a ball and chain. Oh, no, it was actually the Queen Mother with a ball and chain. Yeah, that's how she died. Yeah. Well, it was before she died. There's yeah. a live gentleman. There's a live. Rob, I could tell you some things you would not believe me. Isn't she like your aunt or something? Uh, it's, te- it's a tentative link. I, uh, look, I could tell you some things, Rob, but I'll tell you half of the royal family would be arrested, half the government would be arrested. Your dad probably knows all about it. Dad's involved. Well, there's, uh, probably. Probably. there's an intelligence background. Yeah. Yeah. Raoul. <laughs> <It's>... So, uh, <laughs> and as, so as well as Paul, we've got, as you probably guess, listeners, we've got Raoul here. Hello. How are you, Raoul? You've had a boring week, didn't you say? Yeah, I've just been working. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, well, good. But you, you, you told us, uh, I'm probably, I'll probably use one of them at the, the start of the show. There's a little intro for it. Which one was oh. that? One of the, the bullshit stories you told us. It's not bullshit, it's all true. Oh, hello, uh, Paul. Something else did happen to me. Go on. The car broke down. <laughs> oh, my exhaust fell off as well. Do you want to show that? Sorry? If we're going to have like a bit of a car, my exhaust fell off. You've always got a long fur, haven't you? Well, it fell off like... Are you talking, is this a, a, a euphemism or something else? No, no, it consistently falls off. It fell off three times over the last... By it's... exhaust, do you mean your arse? No, no, as in... Actual exhaust. As in the pipe. <laughs> it comes out of my car. <laughs> oh, your, your car. Yeah. Are we tapping our noses when you say this? Euphemisms. The pipe that comes out the back of my yeah. car fell out. Sometimes moisture will what, go from it. What, what happened to your car then? Uh, it just stopped working. I don't know what's wrong with it. I mean, it's not worth very much, but you know, it's an old. It's worth. It's worth more than mine. Out banger, uh, banger, really. But it, I don't really. What I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's so expensive to get it fixed, I can actually get a nicer car again. Okay? That's what I'm hoping. What you're hoping that you get it past your good lady to let you buy a car and finance? I don't have to ask permission. <laughs> As I say, we are not paying for that. I say, look, we're not paying for that car. It's not worth 600 quid. I'm not paying 600 quid. Get it done, right? I'm getting myself a nice car. That's what I'm getting. Is that right with you? That's how. That's the way I'll put it. So what happened to your car then? <laughs> Quite threatening, that was, Paul. Well, you know the you first time when the, when the exhaust fell off in the safari park with the rhinoceroses? <laughs> Do you know what? I can't remember this story, but you know what? It sounds like a story that you need to tell us. So a rhino... Knocked your exhaust off. No, no. What happened was... Did you say... This is a euphemism. Yeah, You went out one night and you woke up the next morning with a, let's say, slightly larger person and she'd knocked your exhaust off, hadn't she? No, I was in the East Midland Safari Park. You're a liar. Do you get a horn? Do you get get it with a rhino horn up your clacker, do you? No. Thank God. Continue. That That, would would sting. So... Yeah, so the first time it happened, we were in the West Midlands... uh, Never eat straight away. Yeah, it was. It was the West Midlands, not the East Midlands. Through the West Midlands uh, Safari Park. They must have been the compass before they can remember where they were. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you who. Somebody needs to triangulate on yeah. the internet. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like a program. I write all this software, but I can't add up or do my times tables in my head. It's just a curse, you see. It's sleep deprivation. Well, yeah, there is that. But also, you get so used to, like, asking computer, you know, you can... You can Type the thing into the computer, and the computer gives you a number, so you don't kind of need to do it in your head anymore. All you need to do is kind of work out what you need to know what you need to do to get the answer, but you no longer have to process the answer. 
You can get on a computer to do it for you. I get it. You could have just said, you know, in this day and age, we rely on computers more. That would be an easy way of saying it. I want to know about how the well, rhino gives you the horn. Just don't, I just don't like... I know how to retrieve information, but I don't actually have any information on my head anymore. Rhino. <laughs> I can't remember telephone numbers. Rhinoceros. What so, happened to the rhinoceros? In your oh, the rhinoceros. Part? Well, anyway, so I'm driving along, you know... Um, Mind your own business. Good, good, good ladies in the car with a with a GoPro sticking out the window, taking photos of giraffes and rhinoceroses and horses and all this kind of stuff. And uh, zebras, any zebras there? There were, but they were in the different part. Zebras bite. You get shouted at. Mm. I've had a window down before, and this woman in a this this Land Rover went drive past her and bite your windows up, bite your windows up. The zebras will bite. Yeah, I thought, I tell you what, flamingos do as well. They're mean. Flamingos are really mean. Well, I'm not surprised. Well, flamingos, they're minding their own business. What have you got? What right have you got, like, walking up to their house? I'd rather walk up to a flamingo's house than a rhino's house. Well, the rhinos were quite gentle. I mean, I didn't stroke them or anything. I was just driving along, minding my own business, and there was a bloody great big rhino that just, like, decided to stop in the middle of the road. Wasn't going anywhere. Just minding its own business. We couldn't go anywhere, obviously. Couldn't really, like... I thought I could, like, honk the horn and get it to move, but... <laughs> I, I thought against that because uh, you know he did look. You don't want to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, anger yeah. it. Anyway, then the rhino moved, and then I moved forward, and then all of a sudden there was this almighty noise, like it sounded like death, and the rhino like ran off, and they all like ran off in the other direction. I'm thinking, who's that bloody boy racer? And I realised it was me. Mine's also fallen off, and it was the it was basically making a big like, oh boom, the boom clip noise, thing on it, come blowy up like yeah. sound. So it's that yeah. Was so, it the Persia out there? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Anyway, managed to get the RSC out. They had to kind of like, you know... They come out to the middle of the zoo? Uh, they, they did, yeah, 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 yes. Did they pay the entrance fee? No, they didn't. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, allowed, they were allowed uh, allowed in. And, uh, yeah, they got me out of there. Um, they didn't, like, bother fixing or anything. They just, they just towed, towed me out with... with um, because I, I could drive it, but the problem was, because it was scraping along the floor. Yeah, making a noise. It was making an almighty racket. Yeah. It was upsetting every, every creature. And it's quite a quite a distance to get back to the, the, the main bit. Anyway, got that well done. That was fine. Well, you just left. You can't go on foot. Well, no, because that would have made an awesome story. Well, taking your life into your own hands, dude. There were camels. Savaged by a camel, dude. <laughs> there, were, there, were, there were camels. Camels. They they people were feeding the camels. There were signs up saying don't feed the camels. Yet there was this big fat bloke. Always. Why do they always wear Liverpool t-shirts? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> come because on. They come from Liverpool. Here's, here's shaved, Raoul's shaved, attack of the day. Shaved head, bit of neck fat. <laughs> oh, don't. You know, don't, can don't. of curling. Disgusting. Swearing a lot. Yeah. Feeding camels. He was driving. Ham he was driving through the park with a, a no, can no, of curling. No, no, you know what, I'd actually set an entry exam at, uh, you know, Dover. I would. <laughs> His wife I was. I would dri- stop Liverpoolians. <laughs> Or anywhere, any airport. Not that puppy, it's test. just the, his wife was driving, that's why, you know, that's why, but he was necking back the carling and feeding his ham sandwiches to camels. Jesus Christ, is that dog tramping? Oh, that's my dog, um, listeners, this a terrible He's smell. He's got massive balls, hasn't he? In the, he has, oh, yeah. Do you know He's what, gifted. that's outrageous. <laughs> and anyway, my, my dog Dash is a... Uh, it's got the farts at the moment and uh, oh. he's currently gassing Paul. That is disgusting. If you bear with it, sometimes it can be quite pleasant. It makes a change. Cause <laughs> Tell it's, lies, really, it's, it's really eggy. Isn't it's it? rich, isn't it? It's <laughs> normally fast. It's, it's smells like, it smells like it smells like marabou. It's full bodied. <laughs> it smells like you know crafts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the first thing we're going to talk about today, after that, is that Florian's here. I've just seen him walk really? walk past the window. Well, he can come in. <laughs> Shit come me! Coming halfway through, then. <laughs> That's my dog. Not <laughs> Hello, Florian. Just in no, time. No, no. We're just we're just recording now. We'll start. Yeah. We're... So, <laughs> ladies and gents, Florian's arrived. Yeah. Sorry, babies have their own schedule. Oh, I know what it's like. So, what we're going to talk about is me and Lisa went to see Mad Max Fury Road the other day uh, because I like the original Mad Max films and I thought I'd give it a go. And it had a lot of stuff going for it. It's directed by George Miller, who directed the first three films, the original Mel Gibson mm-hmm. ones. Um, it's still an Australian film Mm -hmm. um, and they had included some cool folks in it such as Tom Hardy famous for playing Bane Charlize Theron and it had Hugh Keyes Byrne who in this film plays the bad dude in Morton Joe but actually he was in the very first Mad Max and he played the villain in that 
Mm-hmm. He played the main bad guy in the Biker Gang, so having him back in it, well, uh, again, is, is quite it, cool. Is it a straight remake or is it a? Uh... Well, um, this is one of the things I put. I actually put in my notes: reboot or sequel, because it is not a reboot at all. At the start of it, they give you a brief kind of. He's taught. He talks at the beginning a, a little bit, and to me, it just feel it felt like a sequel. It was just they a, a brief, re-sequel. A re-sequel. Yes, because mm. they don't retell his story. He's mm. the world has gone to shit already. Mm-hmm. He's already wandering around, mm. and at the very beginning of it, he's just kind of stood there, um, stamps on this two-headed lizard, eats it, and then drives off, and then gets chased by all these these, these bad dudes. Because the the opening um, uh, sequence in the trailer looked like he was in a prison, or he was trying to escape from. He was incarcerated somewhere. Yeah, so you like, get, that's what I got. I don't from. want to give away all the storyline to it, but gets captured quite early on, and then. The events happen in it. Yeah. It looks good. It looks really good from watching the trailer. Right, I from, watch it. from, I would say, and again, I'm not, I don't want to be sexist about this, I would say it's more of a boys' film, which is sexist just by saying that, but mm. I know Lisa watched it and she said, she said she'd give it something like probably six out of ten, only because Tom Hardy's in it. Mm. If Tom Hardy wasn't in it, but she loved the bit of the Bane, if he wasn't in it, she would have said it would be a four for her. Now, what, long, what, what long chase would you say? My word, I have never seen a film so action-packed. Uh-huh. It, it's quite, almost it's tiring, the fact that they just <laughs> keep fucking going. Uh-huh. There's a few brief moments when they stop. But I've got to say, it's very, very true to the original films. Uh-huh. Um, and also, it's got that thing, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to describe it. Every Australian film I've ever seen has had, for me, I don't know if other people have identified it, this kind of convention of characters will, when they're talking dialogue, normally in films, being clear is important, isn't it, in, in most films. Mm-hmm. They kind of uh, mumble to the self almost a little bit. They, they, the way they talk in, in a lot of Australian films, like if you think about Strictly Ballroom and stuff like that, yeah. the characters will kind of rant on to themselves mm. and they'll often talk over each other and stuff. And it has that in it as well. Yeah, I, I would say that most Australian movies that I've ever seen, have, they've got just a, an honest grit about them, like an honest, just an honest grittiness about the way that they tell the stories. It's just matter of fact... And I'd say that about a lot of movies I've seen, Australian movies. Even to go back to the Babadook again, I thought that was quite, you know, matter of fact and just... Well, yeah, just the way... There's something about the way they do the audio in their yeah. films, and, and this has got that. Also, this film, the, the beginning sequence looks like it's been sped up slightly because everyone is fucking mental in this film. Mm. You're watching it, and they are, all are basically insane. Mm. Mad Max, he does a really good job, Tom Hardy does, because he doesn't say too much. He looks frigging furious in, in the whole film. I think there's so much imagination in it. Mm. There's so much stuff which they hardly even mention. It's, I actually read a bit more about it online pr- preparing for this and I discovered who some of the characters actually were. There's this, there's this weird guy, a little midget guy in this chair and he has this, mm. this big kind of eye thing and there's, there's a guy who has nipple clamps on and a fake nose, metal nose. and mm. It is. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of, that, a lot of those sort of um, masks and you know, almost sort of like you know, a lot of sort of tribal stuff. But it's been really well done. Has it lost a lot from the original? Because I, I like the original because it looks a little bit... Um, it didn't, you know, it, it didn't, the special effects, they weren't fantastic. They were all right, you know. It looks a bit rough around the edges. I wonder whether or not the special effects in this, they look awesome and amazing, but does that detract a little bit from the, the grit and the, the, you know, the feel of the original? I think it? a lot of it is practical effects. A lot of it seems to be the way it's done. There's right. just lots of bits, stuff blowing up all the time. and. Obviously, Mad Max is a hero, but there's some bits in it where we're watching it, and I was thinking, how the feckin' hell is he going to get out of this? Things like, if you're hanging yeah. upside down off the back of a car, yeah. there's another car coming in with spikes on its wheels, and they've got a feckin' flamethrower. Well, that's, what I, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I remember the, you know, the, you know, the, the Mel Gibson movies. There was a lot of um, action in it, but it was like believable action. Um, and I sometimes wonder whether you've got that syndrome of grabbing the, the, the viewer's attention this day has got to be done by the most amazing special effects and, you know, stunt stuff in it. And I wonder whether or not that kind of, you know, the fact that it's so over the top sometimes detracts from that, that grit and realism in the storyline sometimes. It's over the bit. top, but I'd say that Mad Max is not super-powered in it. You know, when he fights yeah. people, it looks... It you know, genuinely looks like he's... Um, that he's an equal with them for fighting. He just kind of gets lucky sometimes, or... Or he's pretty vicious as well. Yeah. Did he have, oh, so have superpowers on the first film, though, did he? No, he didn't have in this one. But I'm saying other, I, other than other than being Australian, obviously, hmm. and hating Jews. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> <original> <laughs> <one>. I thought <laughs> you might go for that one. Yeah, we well, always have. Watch it, though. it looks really good. 
It is. It's a. It's. I don't think it's a film to take your lady to unless she she's a big fan of Mad Max. Mm. I do think there's so much imagination in there, and then I think they've got they've got all these ideas, and then it just seems like they've gone. And let's just have them all go wrecking, chasing off into the desert, and everyone's killing each other. And this stuff, some sort of that goes on is so fast. It's a bit where when they think they're going to die, they they spray silver paint into the, the kind of mouth and around the mouth. Yeah. Why? Because they're freaking insane. And the, the good thing about it is there's, there's a, one, one of the characters in it, you think she's been set up to be his number one squeeze for Mad Max. Yeah. And then seconds later she just fucking dies. And it's like... Oh. So it's a... a spoiler. That's a spoiler. <laughs> I won't tell you who it is. Yeah. But yeah, she's, she's there and then they just, they just save her. I'm and it's it like, oh, love love it's love like, oh blimey. And then, and then yeah, this yeah. thing, something else happens. It's like, and now she's dead. Yeah. yeah. But it's... Uh, and there's some, there's some really... Shocking bits in it as well. Sound, which, uh, sound, I won't tell sound. you. Um, I I liked it. I, I think it, it. it fits in really well with the whole Mad Max kind of uh, mm. storyline. I love the fact that they've got that Hugh K's burn in it from the original one. Is 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 there a proper ending then to it, or is it set up for another another Mad Max? Um, uh, um, I don't want to give anything away about it. It does set up for another one. And they actually, haven't they've been announcing that because it's been it's been something like. Is it ten or more years since the last one? It's been a long oh, time since the last one. Than that, yeah. Maybe even twenty odd yeah. years. Yeah, I reckon about twenty years. Yeah. The um, the director of it, he was saying that he he's basically got about three different films planned out. So the next one's going to be called Mad Max Wasteland, apparently. Does Does it say very much about? Because um, I don't remember very much being said about what had happened. Um, you know why the world had gone down the toilet in the nope. original Mad Max. Does it Does it say any? Give it any indication as to what's what's happened, what's going on, and why they're in this situation. Mad Max came out Mad Max thirty five years ago. Mad Max came out in seventy nine. Wow. So when, was, when was the Thunderdome out? When was his last? That was eighty four, eighty five, I reckon. Um, two men 84. enter, one no, 80, man leaves. I'm actually, going to say eighty six. No, eighty six. We go for Thunderdome came out in eighty five. Oof. One year out. Yeah, so it's been a, it's been a long time since. Uh, since old Tina Turner and a, a yeah, massive yeah. wig. Tina Turner. Gonna... <laughs> oh, so, um, it's a, it, I would say, go and watch, if you like the Mad Max films, it will not disappoint yeah. it, but it is, don't be expecting, you know, plot line and too much dis- descriptions of the characters and backstory. Um, although Mad Max is, is suffering from some kind of post-traumatic stress disorder and the way they do that visually is very good. But it is, it's very Australian and in your face. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, would you would you say it's better than when we went to go and watch that Judge Dredd movie? Because I know you liked it, but I just found it, I just found it over the top. I was watching it thinking, this is just all right. You expect gratuitous violence, but it was just one you know big bit of gratuitous violence after that. I love Judge Dredd. And they made the violence beautiful, so I've I've got time no for that. Line. Yeah, there's no storyline. There was a storyline clearly behind it. He went into right. the, the, that mega block thing to find the, the woman who's pushing the, the drugs, and he got trapped in there. That's it. That's, I'm not going to go on to the Judge Dredd that came out years ago, but no, I like Judge Dredd. Last year, was it? Or the year before? We, we talked about that last two years week, ago. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. Years. We did talk about Judge Dredd last week, so I'm not going to cover it. But it's a good time. You enjoyed it when you watched I, it. I, yeah. You changed your mind was, since. No, no, you have for, for what it was, but I did. I did. You went away and you watched some fucking old silent films and decided you didn't like anything <laughs> anymore. It was nothing on Metropolis, though, was it? Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they all get traps. Try and escape. Yes. Anyway. French line. Um, place, uh, uh, um, along that kind of thing, the fact that you were asking, do they give you some kind of backstory to it? No, they don't. But released today by Vertigo, there's going to be three comic book prequels. So the first one will be released today, one per month, and that detail the backstory of some of the characters in the film. The first one is called Mad Max Fury Road, Nux and Immortan Joe. So this will give you the backstory to the main bad guy, this Immortan Joe, who basically, he controls the water in the area, in this desert area. Mm. He has this kind of underground kind of reservoir of water and he can let the people, he can let it come out the side of this big rock fortress he lives in or not. Mm. Um, the next one out will be called Mad Max Fury Road Furiosa, which is a tale of Charlize Theron's character in it. And then finally it will be Mad Max Fury Road Mad Max number one, which could be the beginning, I don't know, of maybe a series, but that is released today and it looks like it's going to be cool. That Sounds does. Good. So, if you want to know the backstory, go buy the Vertigo comics for that. All prequels to the current film that's coming out. But the next I want to talk about is game, the recent Game of Thrones. Raoul, because I've not spoke to you, you started to fall asleep. You've gone into um, rest mode. 
What did you think of Game of Thrones? What, the... One of the sounds of getting married? Yes. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I mean, I love... I you loved enjoyed Game it? There was a rape scene. Well, I didn't like You're saying that. you enjoyed the rape scene? No, I'm not saying that at all. I thought that was pretty horrendous. And I actually expected... You were smiling. In fact, you know, you know yeah. when it ended... You're licking his you know, lips. You know how it... A bit of a spoiler. You know how it ended with, um, with uh, Groot... Um, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Groot. Groot? What do you mean Groot? Groot. The old medieval currency. I am Groot. Have you forgotten the character's name? Theon's character, Reek. Yeah, Reek. Yeah. Sorry, not yeah. Reek. <laughs> One's a giant tree, living tree. The other <laughs> one is a man with most of his fingers and his cock cut off. So... <laughs> so similar. Easy to get confused. So Reek... Well, Reek pruning, is being pruning forced... Pruning second place. Reek is being forced... The- Theon is being forced to watch. Now, I reckon yes. he will just snap. In the next episode, he'll just sna- stab this bastard in the back. That'd be very different from the books. In the book, um, it's not um, Sansa, it's uh, Jane Poole, who pretends to be Arya Stark. They pretend she's Arya Stark. Right. She marries him, and in the book, Ramsay gets Reek to join in with the, the wedded night frivolities. Right. So it's more shocking, supposedly. Well, hopefully Ramsay will get killed, because he's a scumbag. There's just nothing good about him. He's not a nice person. He's horrible. Did any of you, have any of you seen the recent Game of Thrones? No. No. I only what, saw the bit that you were showing. When there's been an absolute that. online shitstorm. Basically some people... Shitstorm sounds better than what it is. Some people tweeting stuff. People going, I can't believe they do that to her. It's terrible. About the fact that they have this character being raped in it. Bear in mind, she, she was stood there in the first season while her father had his head chopped off. Yes. Then she was made to look at his head on a spike. Yes. They don't mention as well in the very first episode, well, the very first season, Daenerys Targaryen was essentially wedded and then right. raped yeah. by, yeah. by, uh, by you know, Dro- Car-, Car Drogon. So it's not the first time it's happened. And if anything, she, the part of this this big thing, people are going, oh, I can't believe they did that shock. I'm not going to watch Game of Thrones. They're just trying to shock us. Is they have done much worse things. I think Theon yeah, yeah, yeah. having his cock cut off. While he's, you know, while he's screaming and awake and they've, 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 they've degloved some of his fingers, cut the skin off them and all that. That, for me, is more shocking than a rape. I think the shocking, the, one of the shocking, most shocking things I saw was that episode you showed me where they were, they were battling in that, uh, in that stadium and uh, we thought, one, I forget the character's name, we thought one of the characters was going to win. Spoiler, Oberyn. Yeah. He got his head blown up, didn't he, when he squeezed it? So. Yeah, he basically he c- he caves his head, didn't he? Yeah. The thing, thing, the yeah, thing it was is... Awful. The, the, that was terrible. And the, the noises. Also. Having your knob and fingers and all that chopped off, well, that is a form of sexual assault. The rape is also a form of sexual assault. They're both pretty grim. But will it move the story on? It just shows Ramsay to be even more vile and... Just, yeah. You know, so really, when he gets his comeuppance, there'll be big whoops, big cheers, because he's got to go, he's got to die. There's no way around it. You have to kill him. Well, the books, I don't think he's not dead yet. The, th- the thing is, I think, just on the issue of the rape in it that everyone went, you know, lost the, the nuts over, is that there seems to be, at the moment, this kind of idea that if you, if like, if, if someone went online and on Twitter and said, look, a man had his testicles forcibly removed while he was awake and tied up, well, his, his, his penis torn from his body, that's worse than rape. People would then go, Oh, is he saying rape's okay? And you're not saying rape's okay. It was horrific what he did in that one. Yeah. Worst things have happened in that show. I don't think it's that big a deal. I think the way they shot it as well. It, it was. It was. Pre- I mean, it was evident that it was horrific, but they could have made it visually so much worse. Yeah, it wasn't are gratuitous. You saying, are, you, are you saying maybe that you know that rape is obviously something which is high on the agenda? Agenda. It's in. It's in the public eye a lot. Yes. And that because of that, there's more attention being drawn to it because. You know, men raping women, or any type of rape for that matter, is is always big news, isn't it? Something terrible happens. It's just every, there's a lot of people looking, I think, for to accuse people of being rape sympathisers, and I think right, yeah, surely, yeah. surely, no one now of a reasonable mind would say that rape is ever acceptable. No. Well, the are fact other... your lips are moving, ready to speak, worries me <laughs> so much. I was just saying, I agree. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. I thought. But you're saying there's a lot of other crimes out there, probably, <laughs> which are similar to Games of Thrones, which are not recorded as much. I mean, like, for example. Are you describing Games of Thrones as a crime? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the idea of someone having their, 
They're, they're, they're testicles and willy shots. Torn from, from yeah. your body. Yeah, I'm sure well, that, that is a sexual, that's still sexual assault. That is, is, is a form of rape. That's actually quite a perceptive statement, I have to say. Yeah, well done, Bell. Did you all first one of the whole uh, <laughs> ever ever? Well, yeah, it is. But the thing is, people go on. I've heard people say on on stuff before. This is going on a tangent, saying rape is the worst thing that could happen to you. I and again, this is my. I think there are worse things, but that does not belittle how horrific rape is. It's also very bad that you're saying having your willy chops off and your, and your balls chops off. Oh, for example, you, you, could, also you, you, could, you could be raped and then murdered. You know that logically, that is worse than just being raped. The king, who, the it, king who had the was Edward the Second or whatever had the red hot poker. Yeah, shoved up his shoved up his arse and yeah. died with his in, in his. Bed. Oh, that was in Warwick Castle, wasn't it? Because when I was a kid, my dad told me this story saying that, you know, he didn't give me his that. He just said they... Bend over, Rob. He just... No, no I, was about, I was about eight, <laughs> eight or nine years old and my dad, t- my dad told me this story that said, you know, he was, he was exercised on how, how they kill him. And they said they shoved a hot poker up his backside. And I thought this was hilarious. Anyway, we were in the, um, the, you know, doing the guided tour. My dad had told me everything about the castle anyway, but but went on the guided tour because it was with like a, it was like with the coach with like all these other people and, and whatnot. Did you keep butting in when the, the tour guide was talking? I bet you. Well, did. I kept, I kept asking the tour guide, and the tour guide didn't want to mention the execution because she was like very prim and proper. So I ended up saying, did they? They took a hot poker, didn't they? And you could apparently, well, you could just see the embarrassment on her face. You know, this little nine-year-old. You know, getting quite excited at the thought of a king having a hot poker shot of his backside. I, I, I was uh, talking about this um, it, within earshot, I didn't realise at the time, within earshot of my son. My son, and uh, we, were, we were talking about this, and, uh, and he asked me, he came in, and I was talking about it with somebody else, and he asked me what I was talking about, and I said, yeah, so it was a red, red hot, someone had a red hot, hot poker, a poker sho- shoved at the bottom. <laughs> and he was absolutely appalled by this. And he said, Daddy, I don't want a red hot poker pock up my bottom. <laughs> or a poker pock. <laughs> you see, I thought it was hilarious because, you know. He was appalled. Utterly appalled. He's, you know, he's six years old. He was, this is outrageous. Maybe, maybe when he was nine, he'd find it funny then. Do you not think someone taking a cheese gr- a mini cheese grater, like a nutmeg one, and slowly cheese grating all of your skin off? I think anything like that would be horrible. And then getting like a sand, sandpaper and sanding your fingers down to the actual hands, or you know, slowly. Any, That'd any, be horrible. Any, any physical pain like that. Would Let's be all name things that we think are probably worse than rape. It's like, but, like someone being dragged along the ground, you know, by the back of a car. They don't realise. You see it in you see it in Dukes of Hazard, things like that. But you know, you don't actually realise what damage that would do to you. It would be like sandpaper on I, your face, I, wouldn't I, it? I once got carpet burns, so my cousin dragged me across. Uh, I'll, I'll show about this story. Actually. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Sophie, Sophie, is if this is another that, abuse story? I just yeah, Rob comes out. <laughs> oh, so Sophie <laughs> Turner, who plays Sansa Stark, yeah. came out today and said that when I read the scene, she's the girl who gets raped. She says I kind of loved it. I thought it was cool, and loads of people are going, Ah, can you say that? Yeah. She's so immature. The thing is, she's acting a role. It ain't real, um, and so a lot of people have jumped on her. But the thing is, Ramsey, Ramsey will get his comeuppance, and 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 you know, <laughs> another more, great name. Ramsey will get his comeuppance. Well, no, because because he is clearly just no. We, we saw him. We saw him with his comeuppance. That, was his that is a bad, bad <laughs> joke. He's such a vile, like just such a vile, nasty. Like he's consistently been vile, consistently been nasty. Raping his wife isn't out of character, you know, so it no. fits it fits with he the story. He slays people alive. Exactly. Doesn't He's he? just a nasty like I won't say anything too bad because the little ones, you know, you can hear in the background. He's just Sorry, a nasty can't, can't understand you. Yeah, well, I'm not going to Florian say. Florian can understand you. He's just, he's just, <laughs> he's just a nasty, nasty ah. piece of work. And when he gets his comeuppance, when the ship goes down, when the axe falls, it's going to be, you know, Sansa should do it as well. Yeah, exactly. She should exactly. be the one who and she does it. Absolutely, in a non-sexual way. That, that, she she should wipe them all out. She should just go all, all totally badass and just exterminate the lot of them. I think that might happen. Kill like the that. Boltons. Sansa, should, is it Sanja her name? Or Sansa. Sansa. Sanjay. Sanjay Stark is the Indian Stark member. It's not really been mentioned since the first episode. Sansa, Sansa in the storyline, should have known better really, though, to marry him in the first place. She was she kind of forced into it, though. Yeah, she was. Um, she's been taken from one place to another, basically, basically used as a. Little uh, Finger is a is a double dealing shit face, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's a twat. He's going to get his. Um, but yeah, so that that's been gone. So as I've called it on my notes, this is Game of Thrones, Rape Mageddon. I don't think. 
I, I don't think it's going to stop people watching it. I don't think it was that big a deal. I think it fits in perfectly with the story, and I'm looking forward to her kicking Ramsey's face off. It'll like proper, not not like a gentle kind of bang you dead, like proper like a gentle kick your face off. Drag him through the the nettles. That would be worse than a vicious drag kick your face off. Right, next thing we'll talk about is now, Florian. I don't think you would have seen this because you weren't here for it. Was ah, su- I bet I have seen it. Oh, online. well done. Yeah, Supergirl. Yes. Um, so we watched the the. They released, I'd say trailer, but it's more of like a preview. It's quite mm-hmm. a long, isn't it, of Supergirl. Yeah. And now this has been, uh, pr- some people have welcomed this on the internet. Some people have different opinions. Shall we start off? You've not said anything yet. We've been gassing on. You've been. <laughs> so well, I, I don't know Game of Thrones. So. Yeah. Um, even as a, as a comic book, um, I was quite uh, not caring about Supergirl, I'm afraid. Um, there, there weren't there weren't that many good storylines with it, and I didn't read much of it. So I never read any Supergirl. Yeah, I've I've like had Supergirl crossed over with like Superman at one point, um, and there were sort of oh, I don't know. It's just I don't know. It doesn't grab me. It doesn't grab me. I Wonder mean, Woman anytime. Well, the thing is, Wonder Woman is her own thing. Mm. If they did like a, let's Invisible do Wonder jets, Man, no one would do that. But the fact yeah. that they have a powerful man character, like Superman, it's like, let's do Supergirl, yeah. who's going to be like Superman, but not quite as good. Yeah. But she isn't as good as, as, as him at all. No. What did you think of the of the, the trailer for it, Paul? What a crock of brown stuff. <laughs> it was It was shocking. It was really bad. I was watching it thinking, who, who is this actually... Directed at, and clearly it's directed at, I don't know, teeny boppers, 12, 13 year old girls. Maybe they're trying to create some sort of, you know, um, superhero uh, character for, for that audience. But it was bad. She was a giggly, jumpy, uppy, downy girl. And the whole thing, it just looks, it looks terrible. It looks like Barbie with a bit of superhero stuff. Oh, maybe you've tapped into something there. There'll be lots of merch, I think. My, my, oh, daughter, yeah. watches, my daughter watches lots of you know, like animated Barbie programs and she loves all that stuff. And it kind of reminded me of that. It looked... It, I, I well, actually I felt a little bit of sick coming into my throat when I watched it. That's I, how bad it I was. I think that was kind of the point, though, because they, try, they tried to make her out to be this sort of ditzy, almost like, almost like this weird kind of like bipolar thing, whereby, on the one hand, in, in, by, by day she's this ditzy, kind of airheady, stupid girl... And then by night she's the super like badass hero, and it was probably it didn't work. I think I think <laughs> from the, from the track it was probably too much of a departure from 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 well, actually, the, the 1950s. Oh, I should I should be seen and not heard, ditzy kind of woman versus this hard as nails well, that, strong what, woman. If you if if you think about it, it's not it's not at all dissimilar from the original idea of uh, Superman, is it? All they've tried to do is just. Make it into a teeny bopper version of that. It's the same concept, isn't it? I mean, you know, all, all Superman, these... Superman, Clark Kent during the daytime was, you know, he was a, uh, a slightly Sexy. awkward, geek. yeah. geeky guy, wasn't he? And I think they've tried to do a, a, a like a teenage but, version of that. But teenage all, these girl films, of that but... all these films are designed and targeted predominantly at like the 14 year old age group anyway. So, in that respect, they probably do know their audience if they're trying to target 14 year old girls. Do you girls. think it looked like, like a rom com? It looked like, a, yeah. when you watch it, it's like some kind yeah. of romantic comedy. It was too, it's just too light-hearted. I was waiting for Catherine Heigl to walk in. It looked too light-hearted. Has yeah. she been anything recently? Well, she's horrible. I think that's why she's not been in a lot of stuff. I think she has sabotaged her own career by just horrible being Horrible because what? Because she's, she's a just... bitch. Really? She, she will openly bitch about stuff. When she was on Grey's Anatomy, she got nominated for an award, and she said, I'm not, I don't think I deserve this. The writing's not good enough on the show. Who the feck well, would she do actually that? Said that? She criticised the show which made her. She criticised that for saying the writing wasn't good enough. <laughs> and that's why she wouldn't be going for this. You know, she didn't want to accept this, you know, go for this award or be nominated. I don't deserve to be nominated. The writing is not good enough on the show. Yeah, she is, she's well known for on set constantly wow. questioning the... That's why she's not been in much lately. Because no one wants to work with the miserable git. But they could bring her back for Supergirl. <laughs> Oh, if, if I'm going to say some things for, if I was going to talk, talk for it, I thought it looked quite cheerful. I can imagine none of us are, are women that I know of yet. No. Um, if Raoul keeps taking the tablets one day, yeah. Uh, but so maybe it's not in, in, meant to target us. Would I watch that right. if it was on? I don't. Know. Right. I never watched Smallville. I felt Small Smallville was too schmaltzy. 
Yeah. So it never uh, appealed to me. Well, Smallsville had, had an air of Dawson's Creek about it. They all talked far too much. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, and I, th- I think maybe there's something which doesn't appeal so much to British men of a certain age, British thirty-year-old <laughs> men. Maybe it's not aimed at us. But th- if I was going to say something good for it, well, actually, not good. What I want to see is you. She seemed genuinely. Because a friend knows she's Supergirl, and in the scenes in the clip, she was still kind of like so uncertain of herself. Feck off, would you? I'd rather they portray her as an absolute bitch at the beginning and learning to be okay. Because if you had those superpowers, you would not be like, oh, you know, my boss is talking down to me, what do I, what do? I yeah, do? yeah, you I'm going to vaporise the bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my heat vision. It just seemed, like you said, very lighthearted. In fact, the word that comes to mind is insipid. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I would want it. I would have it. The, fun, the humour in it would come from the fact that she is this, she's sent from this planet, she is rock hard, and she's got all these powers, and she has to learn to pretend not to be super. Yes. Not that she's all giggly and like... And she kept doing that fucking lip-biting thing that you see in all... That women do, like... And when they kind of look to the side and go like, no, this doesn't work on a yeah. podcast, listeners, but like... <laughs> like that. It was very sexy. Oh. And it's like sort of jumping up and down a bit and crossing the legs, yeah. Like that. Yeah, she's no, got she to fly. across the legs. So it's what? another... It's, it's the the whole basically whole another right of passage movie, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. that's what it is. Right. But this is it's, it's a TV. Yeah, it's a t- It's a rom com film as a TV show. Yeah. I've been intrigued to see how it goes. I might even watch the first episode to give myself. Do you know what? I will, also, I will also watch the first episode, but I think uh, I think you know watching the. Uh, I will the also watch the first episode. I bet you will. You <laughs> see, <laughs> man. Box of Kleenex standing by. <laughs> but the next thing we're going to talk about again is a trailer. I say again, we've not spoke about it yet. Sorry, we talk through stuff before we start the shows, listeners, and so I, I keep saying again, but it means nothing to you. A new TV show from the makers of Glee and American Horror Story. It's called Scream Queens. It's a new anthology series revolving around a college campus which is rocked by a series of murders and is set in a sorority, a sorority? sorority house. <laughs> um, sorority. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis, famous from the, the Halloween films, Emma Roberts, who Rob likes, Leah Michelle, Raul. who's from Glee, Raoul, sorry, um, and guest stars Nick Jonas and Ariana Grande, so hopefully they'll get their heads cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas Brothers, right? Yes. Yeah, and Ariana Grande of... Are they both Disney? Yeah, or Disney. Disney oh, staff. Um, it comes... It's, this is from Fox. We did a lot of Fox shows last week. Still not heard from Rupert Murdoch wanting to sponsor us. Uh, no. I want him to sponsor us. He's an election-fixing monkey. I would love it if... After we've recorded this, we got a contact through Twitter saying, Good day, I'm Rupert Murdoch. I want to buy our podcast. I want you all to stay on. I'll give you three million pounds each. And then what would happen is the list of people <laughs> listening to this, it started by saying, like Paul would go, It looked like utter shit. And then it just stopped. It'd be like, It was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's why Rupert Murdoch would be paying us. It's not because he wants to control the show and try and use it because we've got a massive audience. It's because, <laughs> it's because he, the truth. Truth. he respects us because we yeah. speak the truth. That's the yeah, reality. that's that's the thing. That's the theme with Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, he's yeah. always respected. Have we got a massive audience? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's pretty, pretty big now. It's in the, it's in the billions. Well, Rupert Murdoch? <laughs> big in China. No, uh, 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 well, he's got a big audience. Do you have any corks at all for your Dodge Bottom? No. Oh, that is right. Oh. <laughs> We're, we're I now, can't smell it. We're, we're previewing yeah, sure. smelly, smelly oh. vision with this podcast. Oh. The, the thing is, that I would, I would love to sell out. That's one of my big dreams, to just sell out to someone <laughs> rich. So what do we think of this then? We'll start off with... You didn't see it, Florian, so sorry. No. Um, by the way, Florian, who won um, uh, Ultimo Geek last week? Do you uh, remember? Last, no. Who were you here last week? No. Oh. No, I don't think it was. Because Raoul says he won it. I think oh, he did. Oh, I don't before, think though. he did. Anyway, yeah, um, Raoul's got an apology. You were here last week, yeah. I, I was it? Oh, God. Ra- Baby brain, sorry. Ra- Raoul's got an apology to make, anyway. I, I think I won it. Then. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah, you were in second place, though, weren't you? Has he apologised to you? Yeah. 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 You liar. Florian bloody won it. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's in second place. That's why, as we said, within two weeks, he could have, yeah, you know, beaten, be beaten Andy. Mm. Yes, you, t- you, you are such a liar, Robert. And, Robert. I, and I did win the week before. And it's say your second name. You did. I went, Rawa. That's it. You have to beat that out. No, I'm keeping that in. Can right. I say your full name? Yeah, you were such a liar, Raoul. Anyway, so what did we think of it? It's coming for 2015 Screen Queens. Start off with Raoul. Tell um, me. That's 
I'll, I'll probably watch it, but I can't say... It's a type of thing that the girlfriend would watch. It seems it seems up her street more than mine. Got girly stuff this week. I yeah. can see, Paul, you're, you're dying to pour some scorn on this. I thought... I thought it definitely had its roots in um, movies like Scream. Yes. And I thought that it looked like a diluted, a very... Uh, you know, badly diluted version of Scream. And that's what I was expecting. That's what I would be expecting to see if I saw it. The, you know, that kind of idea. Maybe mixed a little bit with that. Was that movie in the 1990s, um, Witches of Eastwick? Something like that, you know, sort of thrown into the cauldron of badness. And a few flies as well. Well, you know, a big I, stick to mix it up with. When I watched it, what I was thinking was I thought, you know what, this could, or despite the fact we're all sitting there saying this looks crap. Part of me was thinking, this could actually sneak under the radar and be very, very clever and meta and good in as much as that the fact they've got Jamie Lee Curtis in it from yeah. Halloween, yeah. they they could... What, what happens if they don't try and pretend to be Scream? They are completely over the top with the fact that... The fact it's a Glee thing as well. Yeah, that, but don't forget, they also did American Horror Story, those guys. Um, yes. A, so, are they going to be standalones or are they going to be... Like a series. It's an anthology series, so right, okay. is is it gonna? I'm gonna guess that from what I've seen, the little bits that there's been a, that someone that killed herself or was murdered at, at yeah. this sorority house, and then it turns out that some, the stuff start, starts happening. If it's like American Horror Story, then each season maybe they, they completely change the setting and keep some of the mm. same cast, mm. which could be quite cool. I'm wondering if it's going to be a bit like American Horror Story but funnier. The Scream was actually more more of a parody than anything else. People yeah. talk about Scream as like it was a serious horror film. Mm. Scream was intended as like a, a jokey take. Yeah. Well, hence, since they were talking about the rules that make up the uh, the, the horror movie genre, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The fact yeah. that it's predictable, you know. Yeah. I think they could do that on this. I'm, well, I mean, it's it could good. be it's like, shit, but it's worth watching, it, isn't it, to see whether or not you know y- y- your first impression is exactly what you think it is. But you know. It's, it looks like all those things that we've just been discussing. I liked the the first season of Glee, even though yeah. it's, you know everything said. Why would you like? I like show tunes as much as the next person. Hmm. I'm just thinking it could it could be very very clever, and it could be a show that everyone wants to watch because of the fact that it's fun, it's frothy, and you get to see you know Ariana Grande get a head cut off, or <laughs> one of the Jonas Brothers you know get his eyes shot out. <laughs> That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It would be, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm going to hold my opinion on this one. I th- I've got a feeling it's going to be good. I don't know why. I've got a feeling in me water about it. Um, now, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, I sent a message out to you lot before you didn't get it because you never get my favourite messages. <laughs> no, I'm on this a certain mobile phone network. Which we don't want to defame. No. Um, so, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, we spoke about it last week, spoke about it before. It's been on now. It turns out that when we spoke about that, what's coming soon... It was actually on two days before I put that episode up. <laughs> so, more fool me. Right, did you watch it, Paul? I haven't, I'm afraid. You I've son of a bitch. Busy. Did you get a chance? Were you at no, 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 I, I was part of it, but I missed, ah. I missed um, a good chunk of it, so I was planning on uh, watching it on iPlay. But what I did saw, see of it was actually um, very you know, well acted. And it, it bore out the, what we thought about it. Yeah, when we saw the trailer. that it would be slightly, some of yeah. it slightly tongue in cheek, but it was. Well, I want to see what Raoul, You did watch some of it as well, didn't you? I did, but the problem was I got this deadline, so Everyone's I Everyone's got fucking excuses. Uh, I, I, did, I, did, I was kind of like didn't work and watch it at the same time, so I didn't give it my full attention. However, however, I do wish to rewatch it probably tomorrow when I've got this deadline in the way. What I did see of it, I did like. I did like the fact it was set in you know the whole like Georgian uh, thing going on and. Just the way it looked visually, and I like the characters. It did look quality, didn't it? It mm. didn't look cheap and tatty. It wasn't like, you know, some early Doctor Who's where you could see this, the background wobbling. Yeah, they, they'd spent. It's obviously spent the money on this. You know, it was perfectly believable. It enticed you into the world. You, you, you got it. And the Yorkshire magicians at the beginning who sit around this big banquet yes. table, they weren't afraid to kind of go over the top with them. No, I mean they 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 were they were parodies. Well, I think we, we, we touched on this last time, didn't we? That we thought you know the whole satirical thing that, that could come about from it, um, which which is very much the tradition of of the Georgian you know John yeah. um, John uh, I forgot his surname cartoonist bloke. 
Gilray. Gilray, yeah. His name's yeah, James yeah. Gilray. James Gilray, then. Yeah, yeah. And all, and all that lot. So, I I will re-watch it, watch it again, so I'm actually pay, paying attention to actually understand everything that's going on. But I did miss, you know, some some bits of it, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I liked what I saw. Um, I was expecting more of the first episode, because I always expect more of stuff. I, I liked everything. I've got nothing to criticise it for. I just want the story to get going. I want the two wizards, Mr. Norell and, and Jonathan Strange, to meet up. I want them to fucking annoy each other so much. I think uh, that's going to happen. I mean, they have set the scene anyway. We've got the whole statues coming to life. Yeah. And, you know. I think it's, I've got a, I think it's going to get good. I've got a lot of feelings about this, this coming show. I really enjoyed that. So I would recommend going and watching... Um, the next episode oh, it's on next Sunday isn't it jo- Jonathan Strange Mr. Yes. Mel, or watch it on BBC oh play it now yeah really liked that so that brings us to the end of this first uh, episode of this week so we kept that we've we kept that reasonably short haven't we I'm amazed so. actually that's, that's, you, you can go on about mass room stuff so. there's still another quick show to do anyway so we'll join you later it might, it might be more at the weekend because um, I've still got another one of last week's shows to put up uh, we'll join you next time for Ultimo Geek, also music fa- Geek Music Face Off. There will be Comic Good. of the Week and Conventions of the Week. And have you brought up a pitch for us? Oh, yes, I have, yes. We'll, we'll have to explain that game again, the, the pitch game. So, so we'll tell you when, when we finish. So yeah. that's all for this uh, episode. So it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Florian. Goodbye. The late Florian. Uh, goodbye from. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Florian had been dead all along. <laughs> what would happen? Seriously, I, w- I would become the thing I most detest: a zombie. What? What? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if, hypothetically, right between now and the next episode? You mean in the next five minutes? In the next five minutes, because obviously we record them back to back straight away. We but, don't. Oh. We do them on different days. Yeah, but this is the point I'm trying to make. What happened would happen, right, if we do all this, right, record it. And I'm in Asda, right, buying, buying my, my milk or what have you, have you, and a shelf falls on me and kills me, right? What, how, how... The would that, how would that change things? Um, what it would mean is, it wouldn't affect the, the show that's in the can, but the, the following show, the celebration show, would be very different. <laughs> There'd be streamers and, uh, you know, yeah. party poppers and all sorts. So anyway, we'll see you all in the next show. Bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. That was ghastly.